exercise one, top solid 7.7. .7. In this exercise, we're going to take a look at the basic functionality of top solid. When it comes to solid modeling, a very simple enclosure. You can see here, it's a shell part. So let's begin. I'm going to start with a new part file. And we'll just go ahead and let it stay as a standard steel part. You could use a blank template if you like. Go ahead and select that. And in this case, I'm going to call it E1. And on the right hand side, you can see that it gives you the uh, references. It has built in PDM software into it, so it's actually keeping track of a revision control too if you set it up properly. Okay, at this point, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start a sketch. So we just click on the little pencil to start our sketch. It automatically opens up on a front plane. You go to the rectangle tool. And there's different types of construction modes for the planes here. In this case, we're going to go to um, these are stiff and parallel y axes. We'll just go ahead and click on this corner and drag this up. And you can see the uh, feedback gives us. Just click, and then we're just going to hit escape. Now we could go in here, we could double click on these dimensions and change them. Now, this is a metric, I'm just going to stick with the typical. 3 by 5 black, it's just scale. Let's bring those dimensions in a little closer. Okay. Now at this point, we could go ahead, we could also add the circle. Go to the circle tool, we have free size diameter, rated for both diameter, and we'll set this to 0.75, and we'll just position it right over here. And now we could go and we could add dimensions to it. Now the dimension tool, you'll see they have the constraints, automatic constraints. And over here we have constraint. We'll just click on constrain, select the center point. We could dimension it to the top edge if we like, and make that a specific value, and then to this left edge. I'm going to hit escape, double click, and just change it to one by one to position it. Now we're ready to extrude. Under shape, we go to extrude. And you see the preview here. And we'll leave it at 0.5 for the thickness. And you see the green check mark. Now some of the settings that are on here, if you're ever looking for the options, they're under the Tools tab. And you could go to Options. And some of the things I like to turn on are, for example, under Display in general. Uh, the anti-aliasing, if you have a decent graphics card, might as well bump that up. And uh, there's some options in here as well. Um, as you can see, you could modify it however you like. I do like the uh, hardware acceleration, and as well as some of the other options that are in here. But there's also colors, system colors, design colors. Uh, also over here, if you want the units, metric. And so there's quite a few different options there. I'm just going to hit the green check mark. Okay, the next thing what I want to do here is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to right click on the surface. And you can start a sketch on the surface. And from here we'll go back to the rectangle tool. You, you could use the line tool and draw them individually, but I'll stick with the rectangle. Click and drag it in and bring it up to about that point there. I'm just going to hit escape. And this is already locked in over here on the left, as you see, it's a reference dimension and it has parentheses. But I want this to be 1.5 inches high. Okay, now at this point, we could go ahead and go back to the shape tool. Now, if you go to extrude, be aware that it will extrude a separate solid on top of the other solid that's there. And then later on, you'll have to actually merge them using a union, a Boolean operation. As you'll see right here is Boolean, but there's actually the uh, boss option if you click on boss, and that will do both at the same time. It'll merge it so you don't have to take both steps. Sometimes you want that, sometimes you don't. For mold making, you might not want that. All right, in this case, we do want it to go 0.5 for the height. Be aware there's other options to surface through all, both directions, and things like that. We're going to go ahead and hit the green check mark. The next step is we'll go to the fillet tool and we'll set it to one millimeter and we'll just select a couple edges here. Check. 
And there's the chamfer tool. If I can chamfer, so it's 0.125. Again, you have distance to angle, distance to those offsets. Just select these edges. Hit the green check. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and rotate this around and we're going to add the hollow feature or shell feature. Notice there's thicken, offset, transform, deformation. And we'll set it to 0 0.06. And click in here for the face history. Literally just select the faces that you want to remove. Hit the green check mark. Now if you notice you missed one here, it does actually have its own feature tree. So we could go back here and over here on the left the tab opens up. And we could go back to the hollow at the top. Now the interesting thing about the feature tree here is it's almost the opposite of what you typically see. So it's in reverse order, which to some extent makes sense because the last feature is at the top of the tree then. So it's very easy to find that. You just right click and we could go to edit and just select the feature that we want to change. Hit the green check mark. And that concludes exercise one.